it's Betsy with Happily Ever After, etc. And welcome back to our May Garden Tour. So, after working on the garden all season, it is looking fabulous in May. Now, of course, there are still a lot of things that are putting out buds. You can see, well, I don't know if you can, but you're right out of frame. But some things like our hydrangeas are still budding up. But a lot of the things that have been budding, budding, budding are finally in bloom. Some of the things like our agacanthus and some daylilies um, just blooms everywhere. And so I'm super excited to show you the zinnias we grew from seed that are blooming, the sweet alyssum that we grew from seed that is blooming, so many things throughout the garden that really just look peak fabulousness. Also, things like we planted in the raised beds, our carrots are finally up from seed. Um, potatoes are starting to come up. We're going to have to bury those again soon. So we're going to go ahead, walk through the whole garden and show you all the pretty buds, all the pretty blooms, everything that's up from seed and getting ready to burst into color. I know the garden is only only going to keep getting better. All of my uh, lads are starting to put out bloom stocks, which is super excited. The garden is so much earlier this year than normal. Like the foxgloves haven't even bloomed except for two. And the lads are already putting out bloom stocks. So it's, it's like the entire season is just starting so much earlier. Hopefully that means the blooms will hang out longer or maybe they'll bloom a second time. I don't even know what October is going to look like at this point, but I'm going to just go ahead and enjoy what we have while we've got it. So let's start and I will walk you to the garden for May. All right, y'all. So we are going to start in front of the shed. As you can see, sorry, the helicopters are flying, but a few things over here are blooming, are of course, pop star hydrangea. This is the new one from Endless Summer. It's doing beautifully here. Look at those pretty, pretty blooms. He's been here for a couple weeks now, so not sure exactly how long those blooms will last. Oh, my shadow. The sage is starting to finally bloom again after being here for. I don't even know, a couple weeks, maybe a month. So that's exciting. But the most exciting is my strawberry smoothie, Rose of Sharon. It has its first blooms and you can see it is loaded for buds. So eventually we will have buds all over this little plant blooming, but Look how pretty, look how beautiful that is. Now just imagine when the, these blooms are all over a 10 foot high, four foot, five foot wide shrub behind the bench, just pink shrubs everywhere. I'm so excited. <laughs> We will come back up to finish around the oak tree here. Cause he is looking beautiful as well, but let's go ahead, head down to the shed. So as you can see, still have to finish whatever I'm going to put down for path, whether it's pea gravel or compost, then the front beds here are plumbed for drip and just have enough topsoil over the branches and leaves and everything to look decent, but that's about a bag and a half per bed. We will fill them up to the top when we're ready to plant them next fall or next summer. I'm not sure for now, for this season, we're only planting the back six beds. So as you know, if you've been watching those videos, we have potatoes, sweet potatoes, cut flowers, zinnias, cosmos, amaranth, watermelon, sugar baby watermelon, marigolds, cucumbers, 
strawberries, carrots, green beans, and more cut flowers. Zinnias, Cosmos, and my dahlias are going to go right over here. So everything is coming along really nicely. You can see my potatoes are, are growing. Just did a maintenance video out here where we hilled everything up. My sweet potatoes are growing. Not quite sure. I've never grown sweet potatoes, so I might need to look up, like, what to do with that. My sweet alyssum's doing nice. This is a proven winner's wasp likes them. Of course they do. Uh, white knight alyssum. And then zinnias. Cosmos, two different types of Cosmos. But the most exciting thing in this bed is our amaranth, which is the longest germinating period. Look at those little red shoots. It is finally starting to germinate. So, yay! Then our watermelon vine tied up. You can see our marigolds are, are doing. I don't know how well they're doing, but they're doing. And look at this. Look at this baby. Watermelon for me. Oh, those planes. Or they're not planes, they're helicopters. I was hoping he'd move down where you can see him. He's right behind these trees. I live, Biddy and I live right by Fort Rucker and it's it's a helicopter training place. This I mean my dad was a helicopter pilot. That's why we lived here. So cucumbers. Cucumberin. More marigolds. These ones are doing a little better. This bed's looking fabulous. We have our cosmos, zinnias, and then up on the porch our dahlias all have green above the surface, so hopefully we can plant them out here soon. Um, strawberries are doing well. They're getting eaten by something, but I'm not sure what. This is recent, so if you know what kind of damage this looks like, let me know. I don't really want to spray them with anything. Oh. You see the blades? telling you he's right behind this like literally right behind my tree dude go practice hovering somewhere else he just comes it's got to be the same guy because he comes over and hangs out behind this tree for hours practicing hovering their practice field is two miles that way go there green beans they're getting eaten a little bit, but not too bad. But you can see they are doing well. Ooh, he listened. He's starting to leave. And then we have the weed patch. Glads. Super Tunia Vista. This is the fuchsia. They are looking beautiful. And the proven winners, Pugster Pinker Budlia. This is a butterfly bush. And look at how pretty those pink blooms are. This guy is just about ready to be deadheaded. Transplanted this knockout rose, and I don't know if he's going to make it or not. He's mainly sticks. But the hydrangea that I hid here was 100% dead. I weeded all around him when I planted him, but obviously I need to weed again. And then you can see my glads are all putting up bloom stalks. This was the multi-pack that we planted, and most of the blooms you'll see are pink or purple. So far, this is the only orange, and while I don't hate orange, I pretty much hate orange. So I will be very happy if there's very few of these um, specific color, and if there ends up being a whole bunch of them, we'll see. But if there's only one or two, I will probably pull them out and give them to my mom who likes orange. Almost done with the milk jugs. We've only got a couple rows left. You can see these zinnias need to get out of their jugs. <laughs> so hopefully in the next week or two, this whole field will kind of clear out. 
Uh, you can see where the cardboard has given up the ghost. But this butterfly bush gets a little more shade, so he's still working on coming back to life. This hydrangea is alive, and look, he's even putting out a bud. This knockout rose, like the one on the other side, is doing fabulous, pruned him back hard because he was growing really forward, and he, this knockout rose, you'll see, is the happiest of all my roses on my property, except maybe the Peggy Martin, which bloomed beautifully for us at the beginning of the season and is now putting on a second flush. Do you need to come back here and kind of a uh, work these vines through the fence a little bit? Milkweed. So of all the baby ones we planted, none have really lived. Just this one. I did find and buy three more milkweed plants I'm going to put back here with him. So, uh, Cross your fingers. Ah, bitty bitty. I do need to uh, pinch back all my dusty miller to about halfway so they become bushier and fuller. And our first purple prince zinnia of the season blooming. We self-seeded all of these. This guy was from the milk jugs, so that's why he's so much farther ahead. This alyssum is also from the milk jugs, so this is real carpet, I believe. I, I grew this from seed and he is doing fabulous here. So that's nice. I like that he is a purple and white mix. Next up, the butterfly garden. Hopefully at some point soon, I will kind of clear up this area, but tends to get to be the area of stuff I'm working with. So every time I put these things away, I then just get them back out. Need a, I need a potting bench. My goal is eventually to put a potting bench right here so that I can keep these things out, but they don't have to look like they're out. <laughs> All right, our butterfly garden. We've got our dill and our parsley, which are host plants, and then our nectar plants, which are doing fabulous. All those blooms. I am loving it so much. And now on to our, this is our climbing rose. It needs to be reworked a little bit as well. I'll put some footage up. This guy tends to bloom just at the end of his stalks, not in the middle. And it has beautiful, large baby pink rosettes when it does bloom, but just one or two at a time. And he wasn't supposed to be a climber. He was supposed to be a bush. And I've given up because he obviously climbs. So then our Gara. For the most part, this is a short Gara, but he's putting out one tall spray and I'm, I'm here for it. Why not? Cone flowers are really filling out well this year. Hopefully I have some more growing in the milk jugs. So I'm going to pop a couple more like here, here. This one is a beast. So A, it is like this whole section is this one plant. And B, I dug this plant up last year because I have one here and one here. And I thought that he was crowding them out. He actually did crowd out the one that was here. I think he's not really coming back. So I dug him up and I put him up here. This is the original plant, which you can see is also doing well. Despite whatever is eating them, I have to literally come out here every day and spray with BT or something eats the petals off the cone flowers. But if I spray with the BT, they don't. So go figure. I'm guessing it's either grasshoppers because I had a grasshopper problem with the cone flowers last year or budworms because I had a budworm problem with some of my Super tunias last year, but just keep spraying and killing them when we see them, and hopefully, hopefully we'll get it under control. But regardless, I I dug this guy up, I put him here, and I must not have got nearly enough of the roots because he came back bigger and better than ever. And you know, if he wants to live that much, he he can live. He's beautiful, so. 
We've, this is one, two, three, four, five coneflower plants. From here, I just planted one, two, three bee bombs. These get 10 to 12 inches for a little river of front interest. And if we can, like I said, pop a few more coneflowers just to give this a more full look. We can one, two, maybe a third one right here will be good. But of course, if each one of these keeps growing up to be this size, eventually they'll just keep taking over the whole bed. And honestly, that is fine with me. I had three more Gara on this side of the bed with the coneflowers. They did not come back this year. The, the Gara River ran all the way through. Go figure. Then my sweet little salvia corner. So these are proven winners, white knight sweet alyssums, and they are doing fabulous, but you can see they are sprawling out a little bit. And I think it's supposed to rain all week, but as soon as it's not raining, I need to come out and do a session with the liquid fertilizer because things like the sweet alyssum, the petunias, annuals that are heavy feeders, they need that liquid fertilizer to keep blooming their best. And these haven't had it for a while because it keeps raining, negating the whole point of liquid fertilizer. But the unplugged pink salvia, these have just about tripled in size since I've planted them. So I am loving them. They are supposed to get 36 inches high. I'm not sure that they will if they are, they keep growing out and not up, but if they grow out, great. If they grow up, great. You know, I like them either way, but obviously the higher they grow, the better. And then these were the angel face, steely blue Angelonia. They've come back for me the last two, three years and bloomed and been 30 inches tall. And this year, they're not dying, but they're not growing and they're definitely not blooming. So I'm, I'm not going to take them out, but I don't know. And we have our white salvia. So this is just a fun little corner. And of course, I'm loving my shepherd's hook now with everything. I finally think I have the right combination. I have tried so many things, but Every single one of these things I got on a cruise with my mom at some point in the last couple of years. This one is a color catcher from Spain. The shells are from Belize or no Aruba. And these are from Costa Maya. I don't remember. I've got it written down, but they are all very pretty, but this one, these capiz shells, they're light enough that they just make the prettiest noise with the slightest bit of wind. So huge fan of those. And I almost didn't buy those because I had already bought too many souvenirs that trip. <laughs> and it's my favorite one. <laughs> so, all right, we're going to turn around now and we're going to focus on the oak tree bed for a second. So we have our wisteria, which I think is done blooming for the season, but is still growing. You can actually see one of the vines, new vines coming this way, the whips. So I need to get in there and help him grow up the tree. Our Veronica's starting to bloom. Our lilies are putting up bloom stalks and buds at the top here. Look at that. And then look at this, our foxglove. These are Camelot foxgloves that I grew from seed in the milk jugs, all of them. And the first one is finally putting up a bloom stock. So hopefully eventually there will be foxgloves throughout this whole area. That is the goal. Our pincushion flowers have been blooming perfectly since the very, very beginning of the season, and they have decided to take a little break. Again, I think they need a little bit of liquid fertilizer. So typically, once I fertilize them, they'll pop back up with blooms, and then we will have more 
more flowers on those. But for now, these sweet alyssums I grew from seed. And we have our Proven Winners Snow Princess, which is doing well, but not as well as the other ones. And it's supposed to be Queen of the North and winner of all of the Sweet Alyssum uh, competitions. So we'll see. Right now, even uh, the White Knight are bigger and have more blooms. I do think a lot of these issues will be cleared up once we get some liquid fertilizer. Then we have our pink salvia right here. These are all reseeding pink salvia that I have dug up and transplanted here. I like them to be in this bed. I've had them here last year, but they tend to grow. And then the wind comes this way. You can hear those capi shells dancing behind me, but the wind always blows everything this way. So they did all self seed right over there in the path. Look at that. Can you just wait until the Texas sage and the Althea, the Rose of Sharon are just big right here? Create a pretty little hedge to stop your eye from everything behind it, the nothing. So I will put some footage, but this walking iris has been blooming several times this season. It has these dainty little white blooms that kind of float above the the petals. I'm not sure if it is going to bloom again, but I thought that after the first round of blooms and it did push more. So I'll take whatever it gives me. These salvia have been blooming nonstop since I planted them. So go baby, go. My zinnias. So I seeded these in the milk jugs and uh, I tried to even self seed direct. So some around them, you'll see down the way. I self-seeded a whole field of these and they did great. They're coming up perfect germination, but here they didn't. And maybe it's the grasshoppers and the budworm. Cause again, this, this right here, this little stretch is the main place. I have problems with those things, but something is just like trying to take these babies out hard. So I keep, sp keep spraying them. And as rough as some of them look, they keep putting up new growth and new buds. So we'll see. My mom's that I seeded for her came in really thick and are already as tall as this guy, if not this guy. And they are three or four plants per spot. So we're going to dig some of those up to thin them. And uh, I might bring four or five of them over here and fill this in see how that helps. Then our oak leaf hydrangea. Now this tallest bloom looks a little funny, but look at these. Look at these. This was a shoot from one of my mom's oak leaf hydrangeas that we dug up and transplanted over here. It did great last year, but did not bloom. So these are its first two blooms of its life in my garden. Hopefully next year, the whole plant will be covered in blooms in its third year. But honestly, I'm just happy to get blooms this year. I will take anything it gives me. Two blooms is wonderful. You see this little daddy long legs right here? I don't know that you can see him. He's bouncing. It's hilarious. He's like, this is such a nice plant. Thanks for the shelter. <laughs> My daisies probably need to be deadheaded, but I didn't want no blooms for the tour, so I left them. They are getting eaten, but I deadhead them, and they push up new growth, so. Super Tunia. I love him spilling out of here. He would have more blooms if he'd had some liquid fertilizer, so. You know, we're just going to keep on rocking. Once it stops raining, we'll fertilize everything, and we'll have a whole new round of blooms. But this is still pretty. It's not bloomless. It's just not this guy right here. I mean, look how many blooms are on that one versus this one. And then our Laura Pedlam, he looks great in like mauvey maroonish in real life, but in, in video, I feel like he just kind of fades into the, the mulch 
There you go. There's a little glimpse of him. He is a very pretty plant. Then we have our Walker Junior Low Cat Mint, which is, as you can see, pushing a whole bunch of new growth. That will be new blooms. Our second round of Cosmos, even with the extra drip, have given up the ghosts. I don't know why. Apparently, Cosmos can't live here. So we're going to try something else. And then our pink butterfly bush, you can see, is putting out all new buds. So soon enough, he will be covered in blooms. And our mums are mumming. They're doing something. They do look pretty with the salve behind them, though. Of course, mums, they say, should be uh, pruned back until the 4th of July. Our growing season is so long, though. Almost the end of February, very beginning of March, all the way through, like, November, that a lot of people say, if we let them bloom early enough in the season, it's May, that we can then cut them back and they will flush with a second round of blooms for the fall. So trying it this year and see how it goes but look at this this is my favorite view right now just the whole garden all the way down it's even better if you come up here and get the pretty glad in the shot but he's he's turned towards the sun now <laughs> but see what I was talking about, how most of that pack of glads is pink right now? And they are this really pretty, like, pink with red throat. This one's looking more salmon. I'll take salmon. You can be salmon. So then we've got another little uh, field of lilies and foxglove. Oh, look, another, another bloom stop. Go, baby, go. Camelot foxgloves, of course, bloom the first year and the second year, as opposed to normal foxgloves, which only bloom the second year. So all of these bloom stocks are brand new on plants I seeded in January. So I will take it. They will probably have baby bloom stocks this year, and then we will have big, beautiful, bushy plants with lots of bloom stocks next year. Super Tunia Vista bubblegum. Hopefully he will take over this whole corner, but if not, the impatience have at least tripled in size and they are trying to help out. Another one of these royal carpet alyssums that I seeded. Look at that pretty purple. Love it. I don't know if this peony is alive or not. And then all my drumstick alliums, which still have foliage oh look i think this might be the tiniest bloom head ever but hey if it wants to put up any blooms i'll take it i will take it i also need to come in and stake up these cosmos because these ones are actually living but they are blowing down so those two need to be staked. The rest were direct seeded and should be much stronger. And then my verbena. This is the Pink Shades Verbena by Proven Winners. And they are doing fabulous. Hopefully they will fill in. My Summer Crush Hydrangea. We planted this to replace a dead Cherry Explosion Hydrangea. And it is literally just doing so good so much better than the other one ever did it's not even like the leaves aren't frying at all in this spot just literally we moved it from right here where the daylilies are to right here and that just a little bit of shade difference has made so much of a difference i am astounded so we will see hopefully he can make it through a whole season and live and be happy and keep blooming once these blooms are done but so far, very happy with that purchase. Another purchase I'm very happy with is this Lobelia. So this is the Blue Skies by Proven Winners. And I planted 
five or six dark blue lobelia last year and they all died. So I was hesitant, but these are my proven winners. So I figured, you know, if I'm going to risk it again, might as well go with the brand that is known for better performance. And I am loving them. They are just a field of blue. Hopefully they will uh, grow together. You can see this one that gets a little bit more sun than this one in the shade is a little bigger, but here's some fresh daisy blooms. See, see what they're supposed to look like. And then very, very exciting. Our first of the rosy returns daylilies bloomed and it is just as pink and mauve and glorious as we imagined when we planted them here. Not only is it beautiful, it is handling the sun so much better than the hydrangea here. Obviously this spot gets more sun than I thought it did. So very happy with the decision to move the hydrangea over here. We moved the knockout rose down here and it's not doing well, but I think that rose was always the smallest and I think it just might not be a great plant. So, you know, two out of three successful stories. I am happy and just look at how many buds this plant is putting off right now. Very happy. Here's a close up of another one of those foxgloves putting off a bloom stock. And this is the Camelot mix. So they could be white, purple, or peachy pink. So it's very exciting to not only see the bloom stocks, but be able to see the color. Another super tunia. This one's doing pretty good. And then we have the front of the swoop, which is fabulous and ready for new plants. <laughs> so we finally went ahead, decided that the seeds we put here, we had put Xenia seeds here, were never going to work. And we self seeded our doubt away. And we decided to just go with these Xenia plants that I found that were $4 a piece. You can see that they do have the hot pink blooms and the light pink blooms. These are all the same variety. For some reason, this one and this one have way more of the hot pink. And these have more of the light pink, but they should grow 10 to 12 high and 10 to 12 wide. So once they're all mixed together and they continue to put off more of the hot pink and light pink all on the same plant, it should just be a mass of pink zinnias, which is the goal. Then we have our three agapanthus, which still have not bloomed, but... Neither have moms. These were divisions of her plants two years ago, so they really should bloom for us this year. Hers haven't put up bloom stalks. Neither have any of the other agapanthus in the area, so not worried yet. But my ranunculus swoop, which was glorious all spring, has finally given up the ghost, and I think it is ratty enough that I'm going to go ahead and come in and cut off the foliage like with tulips or daffodils, you want to leave the foliage to soak up as much green as possible to take down into the corn for next season. So you do not want to just cut back the foliage once the blooms are done. But I think they are, I think they're brown enough. We'll cut it. And then in between the corms, which is another reason I haven't cut them down, I want to plant in between the corms. I think I'm going to plant right where this weed is, right here, right here right here and between the corms, I'm going to plant four or five uh, gumfrina, which should get like 18 inches tall and give us another layer behind the zinnias of pretty, pretty full color all season long. Just trying to decide between white and pink. We've got the blue Veronica behind. And we've got pink here, pink here, red here, pink here, pink here, pin cushions, which are the light blue, and then we'll have that pink salvia. So I'm leaning towards the white gumfrina. The white is just harder to find. So cross your fingers that I can find the white. I've got one white up front, but if I can't find more, you may have to rethink that plan. Oh, look at the butterfly. Now 
We love the kingfisher flowers. All right. And then we have the front garden. So we're getting lots of glads down here, which is wonderful. Our poppy's about done. This is all foxgloves in front of the lamb's ear, which right now just kind of looks like a sea of green, which isn't terrible. I have five more milk jugs of foxgloves I'm going to plant out, so I'm going to do a couple more right in here. And then this verbena, which has been full of blooms all season, is just about bloomed out at the moment. So I'm not sure if I need to cut him back or deadhead him or fertilize him. I'm guessing fertilize him will help and we'll get more blooms. Our cat mint, putting out lots of new growth since it bloomed. And then this bird bath, I literally put water in almost every day. It is so shallow that it just evaporates away quickly. You can see we've got a couple ranunculus down here, still trying to hang on. Oh, we won't take them out till they're done blooming. And then there's the hydrangea. So this is my bloom struck. And as you can see, she is so close to being just fabulous. She also looks like she's going to be all pink this year, which I would not mind. I, I like the pink. I like the blue. I like the purple. But you guys might have been able to tell pink is my favorite. <laughs> my favorite color for plants, for pretty much everything. So... And then we have the front swoop. So I need to clean out some of this lamb's ear. It is not doing quite as well as it did last year, but we'll see. And the lantana is finally coming back into bloom after we planted it. It really, um, really suffered and it wilted back hard. I had to end up putting an individual emitter to each plant. And now after doing that, they greened back up. They flushed out with all new growth. And they are finally throwing out tons of buds and tons of blooms. Obviously, the yellow part of the blooms come first and then the pink. And see, the pink is usually that outside ring. But they are loaded with blooms. It'll be very exciting. I do think I'm going to go ahead and cut the muscari foliage back as well. The truffle of pinks that I planted, these are a pink gum frena, are doing fabulous. They can fill in this whole area when they're happy. And then we're going to do white coneflower back here once they grow up enough in the milk jugs. My one pink mom is doing fabulous. Still tiny, but at least he's, he's growing. The other one is dead, so... I'm not sure if I'm going to put him in a pot or just move him to a different spot, but I was waiting until he got bigger. Once he gets big enough to transplant without killing him, I think I'll probably move him and just take this one out. Every time I've tried to plant mums here, they just die. So obviously this is not a great spot for mums. We'll probably just leave them out of here. Let's go ahead and head down the way. Okay, let's move to the right side of the garden. We saw a few days ago that I fixed the drip irrigation to this pot. We did a quick recap of troubleshooting the top three things that might be wrong with your drip irrigation. And hopefully that guy picks up because he's still looking good, but not as good as this guy. But more exciting than that, my Barbara Mitchell Daylily after three years is finally blooming. Look at this. It's such a soft pink. It's so pretty. I love it. And I love it right here. It is the perfect height to kind of come over all of this. Now, when it's not right after the rain, the pincushion flowers are much more upright, but still, 
We've got pincushion flowers. You can see the April night salvia starting to come back. They fill in back here. We've got pentas that are still growing. But the daylily, the perfect height back here with the comb flowers. Just a soft pale pink. And you can see it does have multiple buds. So even though flowers will only last for a day we will get several flowers out of this little guy and he will just continue to grow and produce more flowers every year hopefully eventually we'll get enough to divide him on the other hand i think this might be the best these short cone flowers have ever looked last year we got maybe two or three flowers and this year we have more than two or three flowers on each plant. And I love comb flowers because they typically send up lots of flowers and they stick around for a long time, not for, not for a day. <laughs> so it's nice to have, you know, lots of different things. So the verbena is actually starting to do well. You can see all the buds she's putting out and she's starting to spread out and really uh, take over the whole area. So that's nice. We also will have a few, few blooms on our twist and shout hydrangea here. Just starting to put off buds. So hopefully we will get more um, as the season progresses. Typically we do. But the freeze caught quite a few of her larger limbs last year, which was sad, but you know, still a good size and she will grow. And our one little bubblegum petunia on this side has decided to grow out and front instead of circular. But I did finally pull all the pansies which means she has all this room to spread out. <sighs> Come this way. I'm like, I want to just go buy another one and put it right here, but I know if she ever decides to grow, she could fill in this whole area easily. Mom has one that's three, four, five times this size already. Like literally could just fill in this whole area, including the lambs here. Also, these weeds are the bane of my existence. All right, so another very exciting part of the garden at the moment, besides the cat mint doing so well, over here you can see the ranunculus are finally really dying back to the ground, which is good because <sighs> dead foliage kills me. But the cat mint has put out all of this new growth since we planted them, which means we will soon get new blooms. The rain means all these new little mushrooms, but I'm not gonna worry about it. Our agapanthus is this close to being in full bloom. Like another day, maybe two. So I am just sitting here literally watching it every day to see what she does. And I promise as soon as all of those petals open, I will put footage right here so you can see how beautiful she is. And of course, this is the re-blooming Agapanthus. So hopefully we will get more blooms as the season comes on. Then we have, you can see, several glads about to open. This one is backwards. Don't know why. That happens sometimes. Another uh, homestead purple verbena. Our butterfly bush here is doing beautifully. You can see the first round of blooms is starting to peter out, but they are this beautiful periwinkle color. And I just love, love, love the softness amongst the roses. So event oh, eventually, originally I had six roses across the front. And when I replaced the red roses with the pink, 
I did four roses and two butterfly bushes and it's, it's one of the best things I did. I love, I love repetition, but I just love the softness and a little bit of difference. But the whole point of this was some of the glides are blooming. First round. Look at that. How pretty that is. Oh. After months of seeing buds, 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 it's so nice to see blooms. And the difference in the height of these as well. You know, I planted a lot of these glads last year. And I was looking at the footage. A lot of the foliage last year only came up to the bottom of this bird stake. And now the foliage is higher than the bird stake and the bloom stalks. I mean, this guy is staked. <laughs> I need taller stakes. But at least I did stake them because with all that rain, if I hadn't have staked them, all my, all my new bloom stalks coming up would be falling over. So I'm going to see if I can't get some taller stakes as well for these really tall bloom stalks. Our raspberry cream gumfrina. It's a little waterlogged, but this is the stuff we grew from seed. And it is filling out like crazy. I think it's actually going to take over this whole area, which is what we wanted. This little rose is just about done for the day. Don't worry, he will come back. Another weed. <sighs> I swear, they're everywhere, no matter how much you weed. Now down here... Our tree has dropped all the squiggly madus. I never know what those are called, but they are just everywhere, causing general havoc on my mulch, but you know, is what it is. The petunias down here are really starting to take over as much as possible. I would like them to fill in. And you can see that the one, two lantanas on this side are this close to being bursting with color. They struggled so hard right after I planted them. They wilted back. I wasn't sure they were going to make it. I had to put an individual emitter for my drip system to each one. So they've got a little one gallon emitter directly to the root ball. Made such a difference. They are loving life now. They came back from wilting and are pushing all new buds. So hopefully that means that they will be in full bloom the rest of the summer. Now my two foxgloves that actually had bloom stalks are spent. I've got one little bell hanging, but I will put some footage from when they were glorious last week because of course everything can't be in bloom at the same time. But they should send up new bloom stalks. This is their second year, so we should still get a, a big show from them. That shouldn't be the only thing they do. This little butterfly bush still has lots of buds. Everything down here gets a little bit more shade, and so it takes a little bit longer to bloom, which is fine. You can see even the glads are a uh, putting on bloom stalks down here and my poor petunias are so waterlogged after that rain but they still have blooms and here is the pride of this half of the yard at the moment my saucy red wine salvia again this guy was on the struggle bus hard after I planted him he was wilting 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 I came in I gave him a haircut and cut off all the blooms and now he has grown and has pushed out all these new blooms and the bloom stalks will just continue to go up 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 till they are towering over the plant so I'm very excited that he's loving his life here because if he establishes and really likes his life he should come back for us he is a perennial the uh, zinnias I seeded are doing well. Hopefully they will start growing, growing, growing and giving us blooms. This is the same variety as that one pink one right down here. So they should get between a foot and two feet tall 
with those pink blooms on them. And then the butterfly bush and the salvia will be taller. This flax glove is huge. He's coming back from last year and eventually bloom stalks, maybe. Again, this, this fox glove's from last year. This fox glove. That one. And that one. There's fox gloves tucked in all the way back here. And they've just, they're just taking naps, I guess. They have not put out any bloom stalks yet other than those two, so... I'm waiting. Eventually, they should be a really pretty show because they are all second-year plants. And then another successful drip story. Everything I planted in the perennial video when I planted the salvia. So the impatience, the salvia, the lantana, and the butterfly bushes down in front of the shed all wilted super hard. It was not a super hot week. Huh, Biddy? It wasn't a hot week. But it just, everything wilted. I gave everything, you know, varying degrees of emitters depending on how big the plant was or how many plants there were. So for these three, I put an emitter right in the middle that sprays out. And not only did they stop wilting, but this one has tripled in size. This one has doubled in size. And this one's on its way to doubling. He looks like he's getting munched by something, so that is probably the problem. I'll probably come spray spray him with some bug be gun, either BT or neem oil. We'll see which one. And uh, hopefully they will just continue to fill in this whole little area. But my peony plants are doing fabulous. This is a Jacorma peony, Shirley Temple peony. My uh, Festivus Maxima peony over here is the only one that's not doing well. You can see down here, uh, Sarah Bernhardt, she's doing well. Sarah Bernhardt's doing well. So, you know, a lot of these, this, this was a plant last year. So I'm not sure why he's not putting out buds. This is only a second year, so it might need to be next year. Sometimes peonies don't bloom until year three. Um, but he's doing well. He's putting on leaves. So hopefully next year and these guys were just tubers. So they still have probably next year and the season after they'll start to bloom for us. But you can see the uh, cyclamen tubers are very happy putting out leaves. Finally, the, uh, the blooms come up first. So we've had these little purple fairy blooms for a while now. And then after the fairy blooms come the leaves. We also have lots of lupins that are rooting in and establishing. We grew those from seed. Pink cyclamen. You can see another uh, little purple fairy skirt. Foxtail ferns coming back beautifully. I don't think this foxtail friend's coming back or that one, but that's okay. Can always replace them if need be. They got hit really hard by the freeze. Our hydrangea has a bloom. Everything down here, you know, we worked on this very hard this spring, putting in new things that would do well since almost everything we had down here last year, just last two years just did not do well. You can see... I planted 30 begonias down here last year, and they're annuals, but they didn't even make it through the season. One has made it two seasons, go figure. I'm not going to take him out. He can, he can live there between the peony and the fern. But, uh, you know, everything I've tried down here just did not do well, and begonias typically love shade. They did not love it here, so, you know, is what it is. So far, the cyclamen and the lupins and the peonies are loving it. And I love all those flowers. So the rain, the rain, the flowers love it, but so do the weeds. My hibiscus, which has only ever given me one flower. I think he gets too, way too much shade down here. He needs to be moved to a full sun location. 
and ending the tour as always with our Vitex, which we got on the clearance rack at the end of last season. He might get too much shade to really bloom down here. It's hard to say. He was so scraggly last year, and at least he's filled in. But he is supposed to get big and beautiful. And I just want him to fill in this corner so that you don't see all of this. Just want a screen of green. So hopefully he will bloom. But if not, you know, green is what we're going for. And that is it. I will try to put some footage of anything with buds that will be blooming in the next day or two. But the garden is just, it's really looking pretty this month. So many things are blooming. I hope you like this tour. Bye.